Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. My name is Cordam. We are back for some more Pathfinder Kingmaker on Unfair and Last Aslanti. We are on our way to Vordakai's tomb. We just dealt with the Valley of the Dead. Uh, we picked up some provisions and we're gonna see if we can take care of this dungeon without too much hassle. There are definitely some dangerous areas here. We do need to be very careful. But I feel like we can we can take care of this without you know, suffering too much. So the Varnhold Vanishing quest has updated. Uh, we have entered Vordakai's tomb, and now we have to search Vordakai's tomb. The doors of Vordakai's grim, ancient abode lie open to us. Will we be able to find our way back out of this ghastly grave? Well, there's no time to worry about that now. We have to discover what happened to Varnhold and whether its inhabitants can still be saved. So, as is usual, we are going to start by buffing up. We're going to make sure that we do have Death Ward on everybody that's important. <clears throat> well, especially the front line, I would say. I don't believe I need any... Well, any... Why did I pick Echolocation on Valerie? I'm dumb. She has Blind Fight. Yeah, this was silly. Uh, when I was leveling it up, I picked Echolocation. I mentioned the advantages of having Echolocation on her. It was silly because, yeah, she has blind fight. I completely forgot about that. I completely forgot about that. Well, it's not going to be too much of a problem, but still, it was, it was definitely silly. I keep forgetting, yeah, because she has blind fight, uh, Rigonga has blind fight, and I believe that's all. So we would need echolocation on these four. And maybe the leopard, if I was going that way. I will see this Just waiting for the buffs to finish. Okay. And now we're gonna get Death Ward on the front line. And I'm putting it on the front line because these are the more likely people to get hit by um, draining spells and stuff like that. So that's why they are the ones getting it. <clears throat> I apparently had my rod enabled, which I hate. Because, okay, I'm just going to rant a little bit about this. <clears throat> if you have your rod enabled, like thus, you. you will see it active over here, right? <clears throat> and you can turn it off at any point, just by clicking on it. So, but if your rod is expended you no longer have the option of, you know, enabling or disabling because it's empty. But the game will remember the last state it had, and if it was enabled, then if you rest and you start casting spells again, your rod will be enabled and you are going to be spending rod charges, which is something I don't like, but, well, you know, <laughs> I'll live with it. We have our mutagens, we have our... Um, we have our armor. As soon as I find some enemies, I'm gonna haste up. This dead man's face is frozen in terror. This corpse lies in a natural position. It's uh, his back arched, his fingers clutching his throat. So I'm guessing poison. Right? We do have delay poison. Oh, the re where is he? Ooh, you can barely see him. The raven's lethal cause echo of the walls. You came, human, past the ancient gate through the valley of the dead. You've struck down all who stood in your path. Despite the danger awaiting you, you still came. My master knew you would be a worthy servant. One more step, human. The sanctuary of my master lies beyond. Accept your fate without fear, and Vordakai will be merciful. But remember, once you open the door before you, there's no turning back. I'm ready to meet your master. Go forth, human. May your death be intertwined with the ecstasy of suffering never ending. <sighs> Thank you, sir. Now, I do believe we are going to get ambushed by Cyclops here <clears throat> as soon as we click on this um, plate. And I, I don't remember where they come from. That's my only concern here. I think there's one coming from below. I'm not sure about this top side. So I think I'm going to leave my leopard over here. 
I'm gonna have Valerie over here, along with Rigongar. And then you three can come over here and trigger the plate. And I will also start off by hasting the entire party. Okay. Uh, okay, not you. Does anyone require my counsel? The door closes. We cannot leave. And we do have poison. Okay, it makes sense. And we have two Cyclops. One over here and then apparently two more over here. We can see the line attacking Knock Knock here. Okay. So Knock Knock get back. Actually, if I'm... If I'm careful enough, I might be able to get my Leopard to tank all of this. Okay, wait. The camera goes a little bit crazy when you leave a cutscene. Okay, we have four Cyclops here. I did not really want to shoot him with my main character, but it's done now. We are gonna go for force bombs boy. here. The Leopard can go and start hitting. I'm going to get you guys going this way. You can start shooting and... Well, I mean, I guess I can just start shooting. Or I'll toss out a controlled fireball. That might be better. Yeah. Okay, so now he's focusing on the leopard. We can send them over here to start hitting. Knock Knock does the same thing. Okay, crit, sing. I think we're fine here. We can just let this play out. <clears throat> Never mind. This was not what I was planning. I thought he was focusing on the leopard, but I guess, I guess he wasn't. This is why we have knock knock with fighting defensively here. Because Knock Knock's AC right now is 49. It's no joke, actually. This guy has a plus 23 bonus to attack, which means he can only hit on a 20. Which is quite cool. <laughs> knock Knock the tank. Yeah, man, 49. Let me just look at this. So, size, dex. Dex is plus 12. Holy crap. Braces of armor, shield, mutagen, bark skin, dodge, haste, sensors, robe, and fighting defensively. Yeah, he can be a very good tank as well. <clears throat> He's almost the level of our leopard. And way ahead of these two. Which is kind of incredible. You have 39. Yeah. Okay. Ah, turn this on. And I think I'm gonna switch to an empowered Scorching Ray. I don't want him to have hits on Knock Knock. Let's just try and take him out quickly. My Leopard already took some heavy damage. Okay. Everybody's dead. As we saw, Mr. Leopard did take some damage. Half his HP went out. And I think what happened there was that the enemy rolled a 20, but was unable to confirm the critical hit. And I want to make sure this is the case. Yeah, there we go. He rolled a 20, <clears throat> it's the only way you can hit my, my character, but then the critical confirmation result was a 38. <clears throat> and if, the, if this is something that's not clear to you, as it was not clear to me for a very long time, uh, unlike, for example, Dungeons & Dragons, or Baldur's Gate as an example of a video game, <clears throat> if you roll a natural 20, it does not necessarily mean that you are going to critically hit in Pathfinder. What this means is, 
If you roll a natural 20, you will always hit your enemy, regardless of the AC that the enemy has. It could be 300, you would always hit. But in order to deal double, triple, quadruple, whatever damage associated with a critical hit, you then also need to confirm your critical hit. So he rolled a 20, that's gonna hit, but then for the critical confirmation, he rolled a 38, which is below the target's AC, which means a critical hit is not confirmed. So the end result is you do hit, but you do not deal critical hit damage. That's what happened there. Uh, everybody's healed. Regonger leveled up. Let me just see if this is a quick level up. Okay, it's not. <clears throat> okay, so let's give Mr. Cordon here a second. <laughs> I'm going to look over the, the level up for Regonger and I'll be right back with the level up process. And I am back. Turned out to be a lot simpler than I thought. <clears throat> so we already had level 7 in Magus for the, medi the medium armor proficiency and we also had the four levels in Dragon Disciple. So, as I had mentioned many times before, I'm only interested in four levels in Dragon Disciple because this is where we can get more natural armor increase, we can get more strength, a lot of good stuff, a bite attack, a feat. But <clears throat> moving on from level four onward, there really isn't anything very spectacular over here. You could get a little bit more AC, you could get some more constitution, sure, but it's not as good as getting what we really wanted, which is strength. So, since we have level 4 in Dragon Disciple already, we have no more points to spend here. We are going to go back into our Magus skill. Or Magus level, sorry. In terms of skills, we boosted his strength score up to 30. So he now has a natural plus 10, which is very lovely. I put some more uh, points into Athletics and also Perception. The only really main one here is Athletics, the rest doesn't really matter too much. Uh, we got an additional level 1 spell and level 4 spells. <clears throat> For level 1, there's nothing here that really interests me. Um, the only thing we could really discuss would be something like Vanish, if we wanted to have it. Or I could just go for Expeditious Retreat. Uh, well, to be honest, am I ever going to use this? Since I'm using Haste, I don't think it matters too much. I'll just go for Vanish, yeah. In case I ever use it, I will never use it, but I... <laughs> <laughs> but still. <laughs> and for level 4, um, a couple of things we could take. We could take Controlled Fireball, uh, we could take Shield of Dawn, and we could take Stone Skin. The arguments uh, behind not going for these is, Stone Skin, I already have a mass uh, Stone Skin effect, which I'm going to use more often than just this one. Shield of Dawn is a per round or a round per level spell. And it doesn't really protect me, right? It's kind of like a Thorns effect. You deal some damage back when you take damage. But we don't want to take damage at all. <clears throat> if we're getting hit on Rigongar, that means that something is terribly wrong. So it's not going to really help me too much. And finally, Control Fireball. It's cool, but I don't think it's going to make too much of a difference with what we are doing. I'm going to go for Dragon's Breath, because this one deals a little bit more damage than a controlled fireball. This one deals 12d6, while a controlled fireball, I believe, can only go up to 10d6. And it can be useful against certain enemies in the game, like swarms, which take more, are vulnerable to fire damage, and um, having more ways to deal that kind of damage is a good thing. So, in total, we get an additional level in Eldritch Scion, we get Vanish, we get Dragon's Breath, and we got an additional point into Strength. That's our level up done. <clears throat> With that said, <clears throat> we're going to check out this little thingy here. Which is just a Cyclops coin. My destination. Perception check. Our time has come. I have managed. A subtle sickening smell is rising from the holes on the floor. Yeah, okay, so this is the, the poison. Okay. We don't have Zone of Sweet Air in this game. I don't think. <laughs> we have traps. I did it. I did. 
but you know, we don't have to wait six seconds to check if there are traps every couple of steps. That's a bonus. I'm just ranting over some stuff <laughs> that annoys me in Baldur's Gate. Our haste effect has worn off already. Holy crap. Did it without breaking it. Okay, definitely a lot of traps here. Here. Okay, some more Cyclops. Let's get in position here. Oh, they're moving. Never mind. Don't hesitate. No position to be had. Uh, let's see if I can haste before the combat starts. I don't think I'll be able to. Yep, I wasn't. Okay, you chill, you chill. Okay, we have three of them. Let's wait for them to focus on my leopard. I would like to toss out a fire snake. I'll just toss out a fireball here. I can empower it, so it's a it's a bonus, I suppose. Okay. Let's send in Rigongar and possibly Knock Knock. Okay, good. And they're all dead. Carry on. A poisonous hydra does not represent any kind of danger because we are protected from poison. I'm listening. As we I knew. And as we are accustomed to. Let's not have talent. fast bombs enabled. I don't want to spend every bomb in we'll Jubilost's arsenal on trash fights. Oh no, poison! Does not matter. Does not matter. Bones and fish skills are scattered across the floor. Why am I looting stuff? I don't know. I should be conserving my buffs. And we have underwater stairs which require athletics. So for that, we are gonna buff Mr. Rigongar. And that was done. DC 33, we rolled an 11. We have plus 33, so. We got a, le a result of 44. Did I miss something here? I don't think so. Black and white geometric patterns adorn this ceramic vase or vase. I can see my destination. This amphora is decorated with paintings of white lotuses. This jar depicts Cyclops engaged in a competition, running a race from the looks of it. The surface of the spot depicts Cyclops studying a pile of books and a manuscript. 13 seconds on haste, there okay. Are many roads to success. We do have to be really wary of traps. That's why I'm moving kind of slowly. Focus on the, goal. the Raven is back. I don't believe there's any kind of um, check here, but just in case there is, we'll do this. I'm impressed. You still breathe. I'll get your master even if I have to fight my way through the hell, Abaddon and the Abyss to reach him. So determined. Such pathos. Who are you trying to impress with? false bravado your companions perhaps just send them home if they are not prepared to meet doom itself or maybe there's a true hero among them who'd agree to follow you into the jaws of death come tell me who so this is another another one of those things with the names <clears throat> And if I remember this right, you might be tempted to not give out any names because you do know from the tips that the game gives you that certain enemies are empowered if they know your name. <clears throat> but what ends up happening here is, and I, I hope I'm saying this right, <clears throat> if you don't mention a name here, later 
the game will randomly decide, maybe not randomly, maybe it will assign some someone specifically, I don't know. Maybe, maybe the one you are in love with, I don't remember. But the game will pick someone for you. And here you can actually choose who you want to participate in that fight. Because what's going to happen is certain enemies are going to spawn and they can only be killed by by their respective person so they're gonna focus on one of your party members and they will only attack that party member until they kill him and they can only be injured by that party member so typically what you want to do is you want to make sure that you are picking someone that can handle themselves very very well in a fight single-handedly to have the best chance of surviving that encounter and for that, I would pick someone like Jubilost, because he can kite and toss bombs. And later on, I will probably pick either Rigongar or Knock Knock. So for now, I'm going to pick Jubilost. I'll remember your name. I hope you do. Because if he ends up picking someone else... So let's say, for instance, in here you noticed that... Maybe you didn't notice, but... <clears throat> I didn't have a chance to choose Cordampina. And I believe that's because it's... Um, uh, a mercenary but if you had someone like for example Tristian which you can have because this is part of his quest you can give out his name or the game might even choose him and Tristian can't really save himself from a fight like that he'll just die so it's better to pick someone you can trust can let's carry on now <clears throat> I feel like I don't want to charge in here because there might be a trap. Or I'll only charge with the leopard. Sir, Those are the choices I'm thinking of. I will see this Let's see if I can spot a trap. I was successful yep. in my search. I knew it. I knew it. Do not hold back. Pull! Uh, we have a priest. Uh, that sucks. <clears throat> Let's back up then. I don't want to fight there. Okay. Juby. Back up, dude. Juby. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> okay, because the priest is going for a hold person. We don't want to have our people in the front here. Uh, let's see if they can focus on my leopard. And I can toss out, I guess, just a fire snake when they start coming in. So don't do anything for now. I'm even going to turn off your AI. You can actually... No, just shoot. Because since they cleave, even if I put animate dead over here, uh, they can just cleave through the skeletons, which is not very, you know, helpful. Okay. So Juby can start shooting... I'm going to aim for this guy. And I'm going to toss out an empowered fireball. I think it's better because this guy is over there. So, there. Can they even... They cannot get through my leopard. Maybe I'll just send in Rigongar because he's enlarged. We're gonna sing with that. Oh god. Dude, can you stop rolling 20s? Oh, he actually just hit. This one has a plus 35. Okay. 19 also hits. We gotta be careful with that. Knock knock is kinda chilling. Okay, that guy went down. Valerie is going in. I guess I'll just send knock knock in as well. We wanna kill this quickly. And I will just quicken another fireball just to dish out some more damage here. Okay, turn this off. And go for a fire snack. 
Okay, you are gonna start tossing bombs for this guy. And Cordon Pina is shooting whoever. Okay, you saw there the immune. That's because this guy is channeling negative energy and we have um, <clears throat> Death Ward on our front line. Big reason why we want to have that as well. Okay, and down. Man, these, these Cyclops, they can really be very annoying. So Juby is going to go for level 12 as well. So I will do the same thing. I'm going to pause the video. I'm going to look over the level up and I will be right back. And I am back with Juby leveled up. So again, we're going to keep on having him a pure alchemist. So level 12 alchemist. <clears throat> no feet on this level. For the discovery, there's, there's also always a couple of things here which make me think about things for a long while. <clears throat> so blinding bombs is something that's always useful. But they are fortitude save uh, based, which is not always what you want. Uh, choking bombs, we have stinking cloud for that effect. Cognatogen is very cool because you can increase your intellect scores instead of your physical scores. So I could boost my intelligence instead of my dexterity. It's always a good pick, although I do tend to pick it later on. Uh, cursed bomb is going to be my choice, so I'm going to leave this one for last. We have Dispelling Bombs, uh, we have Greater Mutagen, which I don't really benefit too much from anymore here. And we have Holy Bombs as well. So, my main considerations here were going to be Cognatogen, uh, Cognatogen, Cursed Bomb and Holy Bomb. So, Cognatogen, like I said, it's because I can improve my Intelligence score, which is uh, arguably the main ability score for Jubilost, but for right now I think we're fine just having Dexterity to increase our hit chance as well, and I'm, I prefer to go for different types of bombs before going for the Cognatogen. Uh, Holy Bombs can be extremely powerful. When the Alchemist creates a bomb, you can choose to have it deal good divine damage. This, as far as I am aware, is not uh, resisted by anything in the game. Evil creatures that take a direct hit from a holy bomb must succeed at a fortitude save or be staggered on their next turn. So what this means is, if they are staggered, I believe they can only have a single attack or a single action per turn, which can be like one attack. I don't even think they can, they can react. Uh, so it, staggering someone is a very, very powerful effect. It is again a fortitude save, which is a little bit unfortunate. Against neutral creatures, holy bombs deal half damage and such targets aren't affected by after the staggering effect. And holy bombs have no effect on good line creatures. So we're not really fighting good line creatures. We do fight a couple of neutral line creatures. And we also fight against some particularly powerful um, evil aligned enemies. So it's really a big consideration for me going between holy bombs or going for the cursed bomb. The difference for the cursed bomb is... We can choose to have, it, to have the bomb deliver one of the four powerful curses. A creature that takes a direct hit from a cursed bomb must succeed at a will save or be affected by one of the following curses. So we have Curse of the Feeble Body, which uh, um, applies a negative 6 penalty to Constitution score. Weakness, 6 penalty to Strength and Dexterity. Idiocy, 6 penalty to Intelligence, Wisdom and Charisma. Or Deterioration, which is usually what I use. They suffer a minus 4 penalty on attack rolls, saves, ability checks, and skill checks. So, the Cursed Bomb, by having Cursed Deterioration, it will, um, it will apply a heavy penalty on a lot of things that we are concerned about. So, if this lands, you are effectively increasing the AC of everybody in your party by 4, which is no joke. Uh, you are decreasing the enemy saves, which means all of your DC-based uh, spells have a better chance to hit. Ability checks, I don't think, makes... Well, I mean, it can prevent them from leaving stuff like entanglement or paralyzation, I guess. And skill checks are not that relevant. The big discussion for me here, or my own dilemma, is... 
I love Cursed Bomb because you really can apply very powerful effects and it targets Will, which right now is the only thing that we don't really have any powerful effect for. We have Stinking Cloud for Fortitude, we have Force Bombs for Reflex as well as the, um, the Icy Imprisonment spell, uh, but we don't, have, don't really have anything for the Will score. And the Cursed Bomb would take care of that. On that same note, Holy Bombs are very, very good. And it kind of pains me not to take it. But I do think that overall I can benefit more from the Cursed Bombs than the Holy Bombs. And hopefully it will not bite me in the butt later. Uh, for skills, I keep on going for Intelligence. We are up to 25. And I just put some more points into... Well, do I need Trickery actually? I don't, right? Because I already have Knock Knock. Well, he could serve as a backup though. I don't really need anything else, I don't think. Yeah, so Trickery, Knowledge Arcana, Knowledge World and Perception are my choices. For the spells... Oh, give me a second please. And I'm back, sorry. <laughs> People at the door bearing gifts for Cordampini. No gift for the father, but gifts for Cordampini, they are a plenty. <laughs> um, so where was I? I was talking about the skill points. And as for the spells, additional level, level 4 spell, it doesn't matter too much what we pick here because we can get them from scrolls and the only thing that matter to me right now would be, to a very, very small extent, Cure Critical Wounds to help out or Restoration. Uh, both of these we can very f easily find on a scroll. I was actually picking Cure Critical Wounds here, but I think I'm actually gonna go for Restoration just because the scroll is more expensive, I think. <laughs> I don't think it matters too much. But yeah, Restoration here. And in total, we have another level in Alchemist. One more point into Int. We got Cursed Bomb as our medical discovery. And we have Restoration as our new spell. Level up complete. Let's carry on. <clears throat> oh, before I, before I continue, okay. sorry. I will want to have the Curse of Deter Deterioration probably here. Like this. Okay. I did it. I did. Let's be careful here because I am expecting traps. Go find them. That is quite a discovery. Mm. I, I, okay, I was gonna say, I really feel like I only found half of it. Our time has come. Here, please not rep score. Did it without breaking it. Okay. I did it. All of the level ups I are did. coming. <clears throat> well, my friends, same deal. I think this one is going to be easy because there's no feat to select, so it should be quite simple. Another point in Wisdom, we are up to 26. Awesome. Lore, Religion, and... Uh, sorry, Nature, Religion, Perception. And that's done. <clears throat> nothing else, really. No new spells, nothing special. We may have some new spell slots, though, which we do have. Uh, I'm thinking about Death Ward again for my main character. For level 5, what could I want? I probably want Bone Shatter or I could go for a Flame Strike. Both are decent choices. I guess I'll go for the Bone Shatter. And on level 6, I could heighten Archon's Aura or I can take something else. So right now I have Howl's Wisdom, Mass, I have... Bears Endurance Mass. Uh, don't think there's any point in getting Charisma Mass. So I can either go for a heal. I could even go for a Hellfire, right? But I don't think it really... Nah, it's not really good for her. Although it does work. Uh, this is only against Fear. Chains of Light is not bad, but we are not focused in Conjuration. 
At this point, I'm kind of convinced that maybe I should have gone for Conjuration, not for Evocation, but I like Archon's Aura so much. I think I'll just take Heal. It's never a bad thing having Heal. And I should have cast this as well for the, um, <clears throat> for the Cyclops. I also have to heal him. Okay, so you are done. Let, Let me just place my spell here. Okay, and let's heal the leopard. I imagine we're gonna have to rest in... Okay, five minutes, it's fine. Like, two more heals? Yeah, good enough. How long do we have on haste? No time at all. <clears throat> okay. Wait, why why me? I can see my destination. Why is it my main character? Mm. I fear for my life. There are several barely visible hatches on the ceiling. <clears throat> hatches on the ceiling kind of suggest something's gonna come down. Like, again, poison or something of the sort. Knowledge ahead. Arcana. I'm listening. This is not the way it works. Aww, dude. Come on, man. You failed it by one. On this bus relief, a cyclops clad in ceremonial robes raises a luminous sphere's loft. At his feet crawl numerous people who kneel and prostrate themselves before him. You require hmm. my assistance? I'm up for an adventure. Since I expect some trouble. Who's there? I need to concentrate. Oh, I think I know what's over there. Maybe. Two ancient cyclops coins. No traps? Really? This cannot be empty. I don't trust it. God damn it. And my and my song just wore off. After trekking through the gloomy dungeon, we finally arrived at the heavy stone door decorated with lots of fancy carvings. As soon as we touched it, though, we heard a click from within the wall, followed by a suspicious noise above our heads. A heartbeat later, before we even had a chance to guess what was happening, some rusty hatches opened above our heads and murky water from the river began flooding the room. The room filled rapidly, threatening to trap us in the watery grave. Along with the water, sand and mud from the riverbed poured in, as well as some of the underwater plants and some scared fish that weren't fast enough to escape. It can be hard to keep your cool in a situation like this, but while some of us were praying to their gods or complaining about not having the time to finish Galarian's next great novel, the others tried too. <clears throat> and we can open the door by using trickery, we have perception to find the mechanism, or we have strength to shut the ceiling hatches. I'm gonna go for the hardest difficulty check and go for open the door with trickery. 720 experience for everybody? Good. The ancient architects of this place clearly weren't expecting their ancestors to just try prying the door open while standing knee-deep in murky water, but our heroes did just that and succeeded. With the door open, our group rushed out of the room, closing the door tightly behind them to cut off the water. After several minutes, the noise behind the door stopped. Maybe the prehistoric pipes got clogged with mud, or maybe the trap just shut itself off. Either way, we waited for the water to drain out through the cracks in the floor before looking back into the gloomy room that almost spelled our doom. That's where we found the remains of someone who hadn't been as lucky as we had. As the water had sucked in mud and fish from the river, it also pulled in the twisted skeleton of some drowned adventurer, still clad in tattered traveler's clothes. The poor soul didn't have anything in their pockets to hint at who they might have been or where they came from. But we did find the pouch of coins. After one more look at the scary place, our group carefully moved on, advancing further into the depths of the sepulchre. I was expecting the, the loot to be described over here. <clears throat> oh, you utter bitches. 
Yeah, it. I, I don't think we got anything. Loot-wise, I mean. Yeah, we got nothing. Okay, so we are hasted. We're gonna have a couple of Cyclops to deal with here. And by couple, I mean five. How do I want to play this? One, two, three, four, five. I guess I have to go over here. I don't like fighting two fronts at once. Oh, the door opened. Wait. God damn you. No! Enter! Okay, use a prayer. Everybody's going for the leopard. We have a choke point. It seems like I'm playing Pills of Eternity. But I am not. <laughs> uh, I am not. So, what am I doing here? I'm probably gonna try and freeze one. You are gonna try and drop people down because their reflex is low. You guys are just doing your usual thing. I guess casting displacement on the leopard is not a bad thing here. And you can also invis yourself. And you can sing. Stop it. Let's invis knock knock also. And Cordon Pina will start shooting. Stop it. Okay, he has displacement. They are kind of confused, aren't they? Okay, here they come. Let's start moving in. I hope I can... Wait, this guy... The... I hate this. The door is dividing the... <laughs> Uh, whatever. Throw it over there. Do it like that. You guys are doing your thing. Okay. Oh! No! <clears throat> this door, this door messed up my entire movement here. Dude, if I die right now, I'm gonna be so upset. Because I can't leave. I'm, I'm stuck here. I have to use the dimension door. Go over there. And... Oh god, attack of opportunity might kill me. <sighs> Juby, drop him please. Oh, thank god. Oh, thank the lordy. Yeah, man, this, this door just messed everything up. Holy crap. And Cordon Pina is like in the middle of all this. You need to back off. Attack. You need to go back in. And you as well. Onward. Now, can I toss this or not? You know, I can't. It's so messed up, man. Can you... Okay, you can go over there, I suppose. I think. Can you shoot at least? Oh god, and Cordon Pina is still over there. Yeah, she can't move. Yeah, man, if she dies, I'm gonna be so upset, man. It's gonna be so stupid. I hate it. Oh, thank God. That was messed up, man. That was really unfair and not difficulty-based unfair. Just just stupid unfair. And this, this door... God damn it, man. And this is how you almost lose a Lost Aslanti run. I know it might seem like we weren't close to dying there. But my main character was in range of a Cyclops, with no way out. <laughs> that that's that's reason to die. 
Jesus, man. I am not pleased. Okay. I'm guessing this is bait. There may be a trap over here. I'm gonna take the bait because I still have displacement on me. Oh, never mind. I don't have haste. Well, I can haste and then charge. Sure. So, you sing. Good haste it. Okay, go. Actually, uh, okay. can't not charge the priest. Cannot charge the priest. Trap? No trap. Okay. So, the priest is going to be the priority target. We want the priest to die. I'm going to bring my leopard over here to see if they focus on him instead of my other people. Yeah, so stay there. My character is going to start tossing out some controlled fireballs over there. Juby is knocking this guy down. Knock, Knock and Valerie are doing their thing. Cordon Pina can actually shoot someone else. Like that guy. Okay, some decent damage. Not too bad. I'm gonna quicken a fireball. Trying not to hit my leopard. Guy's dead. Um, I'll just go for another fireball. I was thinking if I wanted to save my <coughs> level 3 spells. I don't think I do. Although... I could try and freeze one. Yeah, I'll try and freeze one. Reflex 14, reflex 11. Yeah, go for this one then. You aim for that. That guy, I mean. Okay. Reflex saved. Quicken, Scorching Ray. Okay, some damage at least. I'll try and freeze the priest. Saved as well. God damn it. Uh, this is locked. Together we stand. Where now? Cool. I will guide. I feel like I may want to rest relatively soon. This boss relief depicts a cataclysm. Cracking earth, crumbling houses, and the dead and dying, their hands desperately reaching towards the sky. Forsaken Edge. I did it. I did. A tower shield plus two would give us an additional point of AC, but I think I prefer having the attack bonus and the three AC against range attacks. Forsaken Edge, S talk, plus two unholy finesse wielding. This sucks. Because Unholy deals additional damage against creatures of good alignment, which doesn't really happen, right? I, I feel like it's kind of a waste that these items exist in the game. This stone altar is covered with dried black, blo uh, black blood and soot. <clears throat> we can sprinkle with blood here. But, I want to talk to the Raven again. I think he's going to ask me for the name of another companion. Right? Brace yourself. The throne room is near. Are you ready to meet great Mordecai? Are you ready to accept the gift of serving my master? Here's the real question. Is he ready to die for that what awaited him at my hands? My master awaits. Ah. But before you enter his presence, 
Vordekai has no use for the weak, nor any who beg for mercy. But he sees value in using such souls as heralds for his coming. The question is who is weakest among you? Who should be sent away, disregarded? Pick the weakest among you to fly from here in fear and serve Vordekai in their flight. The great Vordekai will let them keep their lives, but makes no promises after this. <clears throat> so, the same reason as before. We're gonna take another powerful uh, combatant that can hold his own. I think it could be either Regongar or Knock Knock. I feel like I'm gonna go for Knock Knock. I should have checked the touch AC of these two, but I do believe that dexterity based characters have more touch AC than other characters. And Knock Knock can. Well, if he lands hits, right? <laughs> if he lands hits, he can shred opponents. At the same time, Regongar can also deal a lot of damage very quickly. And he has some magic at his disposal. I guess I'll go for Knock Knock. Yeah. The river makes no response. It pits at you a moment, then calls loudly and takes flight into the darkness. Okay, so <clears throat> before we continue... I'm gonna have to refresh my memory on what this does because I think this has something to do with a, a buff you can get later on so I'm gonna check and I'll be right back okay so basically these are used in order to get a buff later on it's like a demonic buff <clears throat> the buff itself is gonna be mostly irrelevant for my main character and only my main character gets it the other choice you get is to, instead of getting the buff, you can fight some enemies and get some experience. I don't really remember how much experience they give. I imagine it might be interesting to fight them, but I'm just gonna take the buff so we can see how it works. And maybe, who knows, it will help me out at some point. So we're gonna sprinkle with blood here. We got a penalty of 4 constitution on Valerie. Don't hesitate. Now, I do think that this is a permanent... Um, a permanent drain, which would imply using restoration. But if it is... Temporary... It is temporary, okay. Oh, come on. Well, it's fine. 22 or 23 is the same thing, so we can just carry on. I think we're gonna f uh, have a trap in the middle here. I am yours to command. I will not falter. Let me see. I'm gonna leave. Um, I'm gonna leave you two behind. Because if I remember this right, this is a channel negative energy trap. So only Cordon Pina would take damage here because she does not have Death Ward. Ah, Sprinkle with Blood again. Uh, sure. Regongar is gonna do it? Okay. No, Valerie will do it. I'm restless. Oh, maybe it's even mandatory to do it. Okay. So now what do I want to do? I forget. <clears throat> we took an additional four Give the order. con oops, con damage here. I think I'll just use the restoration scripts. Restoration scroll here. Yeah, done. Um, okay, so click on that. It has to be me, apparently. So before I do this, I am gonna haste because I want to get out of the trap. As quickly as possible. Is the key to so you can haste this up. And I'm gonna rest soon as well, I feel. Click there. Oh, this is locked. I guess I'll just check out this area 
get it without breaking it. Before we proceed. The Astra Demon. This guy can be somewhat annoying, but the the toughest thing this guy can do, I believe we are protected against by having Death Ward. We have one minute on all of our buffs, good hope and whatnot, so we're gonna have to do this kind of quickly. Still, I will do this on Knock Knock. I'm gonna have displacement on the leopard. Don't hesitate. You can get displacement on yourself. I might be going overkill here, but since we are gonna rest anyway after this, it shouldn't make too much of a difference. I'm listening. Uh, you can also cast uh, since since vitals, and you as well. Okay, get your armor back on. Um, I'm not gonna bother invising myself. I don't need guarded earth for this, I don't think. Famous last words, right? Um, I think I'm fine, actually. Okay, let's have inspire courage going. We're gonna move you over there, you over there, you over here, and you over there. It's like I'm playing Total War. <laughs> and you guys can stay where you are. A figure lies shrouded in darkness in the center of the room. The stench of decay emanates from it in waves, enough to make your breath catch in your throat. As you choke back the urge to vomit, the figure turns to reveal a misshapen skull with blazing eyes. Who comes? I came to purge this place of evil. Trespasser. And soon... Victim. Yeah, we'll see about that. <clears throat> so let's see. This guy is actually trying to cast Finger of Death. Which will be annoying. Let's make no mistake about it. 2.4 seconds. Cordampina will act first. I can make him waste that on the Leopard if I fall back. So I think I will do that. Oh, you little bitch. Really? You're going after me. Okay, well then we're gonna have to face him then. Um, you are gonna go for Scorching Rays. You are gonna... Sh actually? Oh, yeah, okay. I have this. Uh, shoot. Activate this again. You are bombing. Okay. Well, let's see if Rugongar dies or not. Oh, never mind. It's energy drain. Sorry. <clears throat> I was like, I don't remember this guy casting Finger of Death, but I guess he does... But no, the symbol is similar to me, but this is energy drain. This is a spell that drains levels. So, uh, if you hit the subject gains 2d4 temporary negative levels, negative levels stack. So, this can be very detrimental, but again, we have, um, we have Death Ward. So, it doesn't show here. It doesn't show, but Rigogar is immune, so we're fine. Since he's gonna attack right now, I'm actually gonna turn on Spell Combat and see if I can stagger him with a Frigid Touch. Or even go for a Vampiric Touch. This is what? This deals what kind of damage? I think it's negative damage, which might not have... Well, let's find out if it affects him or not. And turn this on. Okay. Wait, what? Why did you stop casting? What the hell? Okay. I'm gonna try and remove his concealment, although I think this concealment... It is like innate. I'm not sure if Glitter Dust can remove it. 
but I will try it. Yeah, miss, concealment, 70 sneak attack damage. Regongar just killed him. Well, I mean, 1000 experience for this guy. I'm not sure if the demons protecting that buff are the same as this one. I think they are different. But if they are worth near this amount, I'm gonna kill them. I don't care about the buff. I'm just trying to check... Vampiric Touch. It doesn't show the damage. Ah, okay, fails to overcome. Okay, okay, okay. Never mind. So turn this off. He's dead. Got some lovely experience. We can carry on. Without a doubt. What? Oh, Jubi? Hmm, interesting. I guess he was the closest one. I can see my destination. Okay. <clears throat> and I think we reached a, a cool part of the dungeon. We're gonna talk to some barbarians here, maybe get some information about what's going on. And we are about time to finish up this episode, which I think is good enough because we cleared out a lot of this initial level of Vordakai's tomb. We're gonna have, uh, I think, another level still. Um, we killed a bunch of enemies, we got some cool stuff, we got some experience. We got a Cloak of Resistance plus 3, which I think I'm actually gonna equip it right now before I forget. Okay. Um, we got some level ups done, and we have some more fun stuff coming our way. I, I think everybody has leveled up, correct? Yeah, everybody's level 12 now. Okay. So with this, we are going to finish up this episode. As always, my friends, I want to thank you all for being here with me on the channel, watching some Pathfinder Kingmaker. I hope you guys are enjoying it. Questions, suggestions, leave a comment below. If you are enjoying the content, consider subscribing for more. Um, uh, God, brain fart. <laughs> There's new episodes coming out very, very soon, and I hope to see you all in the next episode. Until then, stay safe, everyone.